you've got tofu, making sure you've got some sort of whole grain with it, that makes it a complete protein. So when you look at um, the Indian diet, um, a lot of Indians will have lentils, but they also have rice. Mm -hmm. When you look at an Asian type diet, they'll have tofu, but they'll have rice and noodles. So if you combine a grain with a plant protein, that makes it a complete protein as a vegetarian. So if you put a bit of um, green leafy veg with it, that absorbs the iron too. But if you want any more specific information, I can bring that this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thanks all for, um, for coming today. I've, um, like I said before, we're going to be talking about the mindset, how to change your mindset. Does anyone have any questions about, about that? Because I'm going to teach you just a little um, framework on how to help you help yourself in relation to how you should be thinking in a certain way if you're looking at you know, keeping on track with, with fitness and nutrition. But any questions about that? Or does anyone find it difficult to think very positively and very, in a very helpful way? Does anyone find that difficult? Yeah? <laughs> any comments or questions about that? Or thought you'd just uh, sit back and see what you think. I think you set your mindset too high sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, I just know that I'm not Catholic, but I've got oh, a whole age because of girls talking about it. I'll put up my age. You know, that, and that mm -hmm. kind of fits in with it. Mm -hmm. It's very hard to do that completely when you're... I don't know. I don't think I'm going to Two drinks a week anyway. And I think it's like last night because you go... Yeah, it's very hard to say, oh, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. For, you know, for the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> keep it up. That's right. That's a really good point. Who really does raise the bar really high? It might be expectations of the mother or of the father or if you're looking at, um, you know, fitness. Um, quite often, if we set the bar too high, like, I'll exercise seven days a week. Now, I don't know about you, you know, I have a lot of, it's in my head, if, if you say seven days a week, because given our life circumstances, is that, is that realistic? So what happens if we don't achieve seven days? What happens if we say, don't eat chocolate, don't eat wine, and don't drink wine, and you go out and everyone's having wine? What happens the more you say don't have something? What happens? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the three-year-old comes out, you've got a three-year-old, there's a three-year-old rule. So the minute you put restrictions on yourself, you tend to rebel. So it's kind of exactly like linked to today. Sometimes um, it goes back to, if that's your strategy, cut out chocolate, exercise seven days a week, if that works for you, brilliant. If it doesn't work for you, you've got to go back to the drawing board and think, is that a realistic strategy? And what's my frame of thinking? Am I being realistic? Or am I perpetually you know, setting myself up to fail? So that, that's what it's all about today. Because most of the barriers reside in our heads. And even as a dietitian, um, I have to go back and get qualifications because simply just you know, outlining to people what they need to eat wouldn't always work because all of you pretty much will know what to do, don't you? In relation to food and, you know, food and exercise, you're pretty savvy. But one of the biggest things that stops us from doing that is maybe unrealistic expectations or talking yourself in or out of making a change. So I, to be honest, probably with 99% of the patients I see, they don't leave my consultation unless they've got a behavioural plan of what they need to do, so what they need to eat and with the plan, but also a plan on how to think. Because if you don't have a thinking strategy at the last minute, you can talk yourself out of it. And that matters to me as well. So I use it on myself, it doesn't always work. <laughs> so I want to show you just the, the basic tenets of, of CBT, cognitive behavioural therapy, because that's a little framework that you can use to help you understand how your mind works. So I'll just try that. Decided not to go and exercise. So you may have laid a um, roll over, hit the snooze button on, never been like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So at that point in time, what did you say to yourself that stopped you from going out and exercising? What were the thoughts that went through your mind? 
Bed is better. Bed is better? The weather is terrible, I could actually swim rather than run. Yep, what else? I'm tired. I'm tired. That's why I said this morning, I'm tired. I've got a workshop to go What else? I've already done. I'll save time. Or I've already done six classes, but I can do that this time. I did seven, six classes, I'm in credit. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so when you think like that at that point in time, what's your confidence if you actually get out and exercise? Zilch. Okay, so what happens when you don't exercise? What's the impact? It would be different for everyone, but when you don't get out and exercise, what's your interpretation of that? What, what tends to happen? Feel guilty. feel guilty? Okay, so it impacts here, you start to feel a bit guilty. What happens when you feel guilty? Everyone has different ways of relieving guilt. Eggs. <laughs> yeah, think I'll have a good breakfast. Why think I'll go and have the eggs, the bacon? The whole so lot. then you go, you feel guilty, <laughs> and you think, what's well, the point? I'll go and have a big breakfast, and it impacts on, yeah, it impacts on what you do, you agree, you feel guilty, you just, Cycle. So if you find sometimes it's a negative downward spiral, sometimes you feel like you're losing control. Yeah. Now, that doesn't mean that we're being um, depressive here. That is just normal in any context. It doesn't have to be in relation to health. It could be in relation to anything. <coughs> but there has been a point in time, I know, that you have been successful and you have got out of bed and exercise. Or maybe it was in the afternoon when you decided to go to Gary's class or whatever. I'm sure we all know that. So when you go and exercise, when you were successful, what went through your mind that made you get out and exercise? What did you think? Did it, yeah, okay, so this yeah, for some people it's don't think, just do. Because the more you think, the more you rationalise the idea that you don't need to exercise. So for some people it might be just get off your butt and go. Yep. What other things do you say to yourself that makes you go and exercise? How you I'm gonna feel good after. I'm gonna feel good. So you're trying to sell it to yourself, and I don't think we're very good at selling the concept of health to ourselves. So you're actually saying to yourself, I will feel better. It's like when we encourage our children, it might be, you're going to feel better if you do this, whatever the case may be. So you're reminding yourself of the benefits. I'm going to get to see Gary. Teacher's <laughs> pet. <laughs> Gary, he's going to be so proud of me. <laughs> Does anyone ever remind themselves of the consequences if I don't feel it? do it, I'm going to feel worse. Does anyone have to remind themselves of what the loss is? Yeah, okay. I don't want to go back there. I don't want to go back there. For some people, it might be about their health. I don't want to end up like my mother or father with diabetes, or I don't want to get back to square one. I've worked hard. I deserve it. So you can see with most people, and it's not a one-size-fits-all, we're all very different in our tastes, but also very different in how we think and our thinking strategies. So for some of you, you're saying that you're thinking...